Okay, I selected a brush tip from the Mixer brush tool options, and it looks a little like a spider, right? It's not going to really do exactly what I want as far as filling in big chunks of area. So I'm going to undo that, and I'm going to go over to my brush preset panel. Excessive right here. And if you click on shape dynamics, you have a bunch of options. If they're grayed out, that means it's not uh, available. But what I'm going to do is play with the spacing. And the higher the spacing, you see that the less dense the brush is, I'm going to bring the spacing all the way down to one. And then play with the thickness of the bristles, the length of the bristles, thickness. All right, so this is how many bristles? Lots of bristles. Less bristles, I want to add lots of bristles. The stiffness of the bristles, and then also the angle of the bristles. That looks pretty good, and you'll get a preview in this little window and then on your canvas. I'm going to make the brush a little smaller by hitting the left bracket and turning on my background copy. I'm going to zoom in and start to work on the underpainting. The underpainting is where you can remove detail. The painting does not have to look photographic. Um, just loose shapes and structure. You just want to highlight the composition by creating flat planes. And it will look very abstract, but this is just to get the basic shapes down. The objective of this layer is to create big, bold shapes that are the building blocks of composition. Do not worry about detail. This layer is for overall shapes. You can finalize and finesse later. So this is basically a rough draft. I'm going to hold down the eye very quickly, go to the eyedropper tool, click, go back into the brush tool and you'll see that it has this yellow sample. With sample all layers now selected, I'm going to go in and just, now, you see how it's blending a lot of the black? That may not be what I want, so I'm going to go up in my history, get rid of that, and I'm going to make this moist. So there'll be a lot less mixing, and also the brush will not be as wet. Oops, I accidentally untab myself. There we go. Do want a little bit more wet on that brush. Like I said, this is just to get some of the shape. I'm not too concerned right now about detail. I'm trying to work a little bit in a consistent line. This is much easier with a Wacom, and if you're interested in a Wacom, please let me know in class or send me an email. There are some really affordable options, um, like the bamboo. I'm using just a normal Wacom tablet, and once you use them, these can be a little weird to get used to, but then once you're used to them, it's really hard to go back to anything else. Notice I'm really not changing this color here. I can, but because it's mixing, I'm gonna kind of decrease those a little bit. And you can make the brush a little larger because, again, this is not about getting detail. It's just about getting those big shapes. When you do present your work, you will turn off the background layer. So you want the painting to be able to stand on its own. And in order to do that, clean my brush. Yeah, add a little more of that kind of nice green in there. If your brush starts to get really messy, you accidentally picked up a color that you didn't want, you can click here and hit clean brush. When you start on your next banana, you'll be good to go. If we turn this layer off, you'll see oh, that's looking pretty good. Again, it's just the big flat shapes. Now, how do you know what brush to pick? Well, I experimented with a bunch. I think your best option as far as getting the best results for your digital painting is to make a blank layer either in this file or in its, its own file 
and experimenting with the different brush strokes. What do all of these brushes look like as opposed to these different bristle brushes? How do those look against some of these more decorative or grungy brushes? And with this little sprocket here, we'll tell you, hey, I've got a bazillion more options for you here. And you can, on just one layer, switching out brushes, find out which ones you want to use. In the next lesson, we will go through how to personalize your brush. So you saw that I made some changes here to the bristles and the angle and such. If I like all of my settings, I can say new brush preset. I may want to call it something that has to do with this project, like banana. And then it will be in, oops, let's go over here. It will be in my list. And instead of viewing them as little icons, let's go to large list. Round fan banana is now loaded at the bottom and it will save all of those presets. So this is what you want to do if you want, if you find a brush that you really like because working with these brushes, you have so many options, it can get a little overwhelming. You can make the brush bigger or smaller by using the bracket key. And I'm just going to continue to block, block out the bananas with this brush. Now for this painting, don't worry too much about the background. This is your focal point here. I would say even the toaster and the cutting board look pretty fun, but I wanted to give you a wide range of colors and textures to experiment with. As long as it is sitting, um, on a, some space, you are not tied to this background, especially because I'm in it and so is this oven. We'll continue on with that, but this is a great way to get started. Okay, bring in that little nub, bring in that little nub, command S to save. Make sure that you save it as your last name, underscore, and whatever project it is as a PSD so it supports layers, and then click OK.